Okay, this is um, video number seven in the series as I walk through grief and loss with you guys. I'm sharing my journey to um, help you through the journey, to show things that are common to all mankind, to show God's hand in the journey, um, and to bring healing and fullness, and just to help people walk through the process as the Lord put that on my heart um, as a mission field as I'm walking through this passing of my father. Um, this is December 6th, and uh, my father passed in August, September, October, November, so four months. It's been four months, almost four months, three and a half, almost four months in a couple weeks. Um, and I've been sharing my journey, so thanks for joining me. Uh, I always like to open with prayer, so I just invite the Lord to be here with us, um, and I just ask, Lord, that you would guide my words that you would open everybody's spiritual eyes and ears to hear what your spirit is speaking to each of them individually, that you would bring peace to their hearts and that you would give them insight and wisdom and help them in the healing journey, Lord, to not get stuck, to not be filled with grief and anger, um, to become depressed, Lord, through this process, but help them to feel their feelings so that they can heal from the loss, Lord. Um, and I just pray that uh, you would guard this message, Lord, that the enemy would not be able to twist my words or use this for evil, but that your purposes and your will would be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so a couple things that I wanted to share today, kind of another mixed bag about where I'm at in the process. Um, one of the things that's been standing out to me, two, actually two of the things that have been standing out to me in this stage that I'm in. Um, again, we all go through the stages. Um, you know, different timeline. There's no, there's no timeline that's going to be the same to every single one of us um, because there's just so many factors that pour into this. But with me and my journey where I'm at right now um, is I'm having a lot more good days than really hard days. Um, so it seems that there's, there's more sunshine and fewer darker days. Um, there, the grief can still come in and hit me like a wave. Um, suddenly and very strongly um and i'm going to share a little story at the end about how that happened to me this week um but those that ha is happening to me fewer um fewer times and it's like further spread apart in the times that that happens i still miss my dad like crazy and think about him often um and i'm still processing and figuring this out and seeing what life looks like and wishing that he was here and feeling sadness when I experience something that I'm like, oh, I never got to do that with him. Or when I think of a conversation um, that I was wanting to have with him and thinking, wow, I'm, we're never going to get to talk about that. I'm not going to get to pick his brain or hear his wisdom or hear his input or have questions answered. There were questions that I still wanted to ask him and he took the answers with him. And so um, those are kind of things that I'm still working through. Um, one, two things that came up for me that I was really thinking through and talking about with the Lord this week. One of them was like memories, um, not only memories of my dad, about him, things that we did together, um, also memories of like stories that he told me, his life stories, um, things that he spoke into my life. So as I'm thinking back and remembering him and trying to pull this information, um, I found that like some memories were really clear and really easy for me to pull up and others um, are more distant and they're harder or, you know, a topic is coming up and I'm having a hard time remembering the details. Like, what did he say about this? What did he say about that? And I can't ask him and it feels sad at some times because I'm like, it, that information is just gone. And um, at that point, what I have to do is realize I can't change it. I can go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, if this is something that you would, you know, gift to me and give me this wisdom and this knowledge, because you know, all things, would you help me remember this and ask him and the Lord loves to give us good gifts. And so I have no doubt that in some instances, he's going to do that and clarify things and bring back details to my memory that I have forgotten. Um, and in other circumstances, um, for reasons that I, you know, we won't always get to know on this side of eternity, we're not going to get those answers and we're not going to get the details. And I was asking the Lord, how do I come to terms with that? Because that is painful and that can drive you, your bonkers. It can just make your mind spin and spin and spin trying to like, you know, figure that out or, 
or just uh, hyper-focusing on it and just spinning the wheel and never getting the answer. So I said, Lord, how do we come to terms with that? Um, and so actually the Lord brought the serenity prayer to my mind. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. I learned of the serenity prayer. I was going to some Al-Anon meetings in the past, and um, we would say the serenity prayer at the beginning of the meeting. So I know it's longer than this, and I know there are other, there's many different versions, but this is the part that was jumping up in my mind. Um, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And that has been the cry of my heart to the Lord is there's, we have to find peace in that. And we have to know and recognize what we're in control of, what we're not in control of and have that wisdom. And those things only come from God, but they really brought me peace and solace because I'm not spinning my wheels, trying to control things that I can never control, that I can never change. And um, thankfully the Lord taught me this lesson a, um, a while back. It's been years in the making, but it's been really helpful for me. So um, if you already know that, lean into that and, and make that the prayer of your heart. And if you don't know it, then look into it, pray that, talk to the Lord about it, ask for understanding. Um, and then one other thing on that topic about memories is, you know, um, losing a person. It's traumatic. It's tragic. And when we're going through those things, our brain um, I don't know all the scientific terms, but our brain usually doesn't function the same way under that duress and those traumas and those tragedies. Um, when it does, like on a normal day, when we're just going through life and everything's going well for us. And so I know that there's going to be as our, even our brain and all the cells, even throughout our whole body are going through the healing process. There might be things that I can't remember today that in, you know, months down the line or a year or two down the line, they're going to come back to me readily because my brain is still, my brain is still in recovery. My soul is still in recovery from this loss. And so even some things that I can't remember today, I can have peace and say, well, you know what? They might come back to me as my brain and my body and all my cells are healing. Um, and if they don't come back by that means, the Lord might bring them back to me. And even so, if, if by me, uh, I can't speak, sorry, <laughs> I can speak, I just tongue twisted, but if either of those means are not working, then I can lean on the fact that it will be okay. And another thing that brought me peace in that was knowing that, okay, um, I can't remember the story. I can't rem I can remember the gist of this story. I can't remember the details. Did he say this or did he say that? But what has brought me peace is knowing, even though it's not coming to me today and it may never come back, when he told me that story, when we had that discussion, he sowed that into my life at that time. And it helped me in that moment. And I knew it in that moment and I understood it. And that became a part of the fabric of who I am. Even if I can't recall it, it is in me and I digested it and it, I put it into place. And I use it at that time. And that brings me solace and that brings me peace as well. So there's some tools, some healthy coping tools and um, ways to get the right perspective if you're going through that. And um, I don't need to feel guilty or beat myself up or believe the lie that because memories are fuzzy or I can't remember details, that doesn't mean I'm forgetting my dad. It doesn't mean that I'm leaving him behind. Um you know, there's no way like that person that we loved, we're never going to forget them. We might forget some of the details, but what I just said, they are in the fabric of who we are. If we spent considerable time with them, even a little bit of time, you know, even one time with a person can impact us. So no matter the amount of time, if you love that person, there's a part of them that, that, um, will be with you forever. You know, even if you can't even recall it, like it's in there. And so, and then especially the other comforting thing is if you are blood related to that person that you lost, like you guys share DNA, they're literally woven into the fabric of your DNA. And that's bringing me comfort as well. Like there's things, you know, even if I had been raised in a completely different household than my father and I had never seen him, genetic studies show because of those genetic ties 
that I would have traits and things like him. So even things that I'm not aware of, even things that he didn't necessarily tell me or teach me, because we share genetics, he's always going to be a part of me, even on that very um, genetic level of the cells and my DNA and everything. So those are some things that have been really helping me get through that I talk to the Lord about a lot. Um, the other thing I was going to say is what I've noticed, um, what I've been kind of struggling with, I was talking with my husband about this, is um, sleeping has been kind of hard. It's like my body is fighting the need for sleep. Um, and I know that that comes with any sort of chaos in our life, any sort of trauma or tragedy, when, when the inside of us is in turmoil, that's a normal thing that happens to humans. And in the beginning of this process, I wasn't struggling with sleep. Like I wanted to sleep all the time and my body just automatically wanted to go to sleep. And I shared about that in my earlier videos, but right now, like it's just it's switched and it's harder for me to sleep. So I have to be very intentional to get my body in the state to be able to rest and to be able to sleep. And in the past, I actually really wrestled before I, before my dad passed, like in my past, like years past, I really was struggling with what people might've termed like insomnia or whatever. And um, I just thought, oh, this is just how I am. This is just how it's going to be. But after learning about myself and learning about emotions and turmoil and all these different things and our bodies and caffeine <laughs> and habits and things, I was able to actually see that it wasn't just something I was doomed to live with forever, but you can retrain, you can do things to help get your body more peaceful inside getting yourself ready to sleep, putting um, habits into place to signal to all of your brain and all of yourself in your body that it's sleeping time to do things to calm your inner self in order to get to sleep. So some people might have to have more of like a regiment in order to prepare yourself to sleep. Um, and so I'm finding myself being very purposeful about making sure I have plenty of water, about um taking care, um, well, I do this anyways, but even right now, watching my caffeine intake, the amount of caffeine, also how late in the day my caffeine intake is, because um, I'm finding the earlier that you stop your caffeine intake, if you're having any at all, then it, you're, you have better sleep later on. Some days, like if I even have caffeine in the morning, I can't sleep later on at night. And um, so, but what I've noticed is to make it in the first part of the day, if I'm going to have a drink with caffe a caffeinated drink or whatever, um, being regimented about that, um, you know, watching your exposure to blue light, watching your sugar intake, making sure you get exercise, do something to relax in the evening, whether reading a book, you know, turning off the screen and reading a book, taking a hot bath, um, maybe just um, listening to some worship music, playing some worship music. So getting a routine. So your body, it's just the same, like when you're putting your kids to bed, right? Um, if you don't have kids, you can remember when you were a kid or what you've seen on movies or whatever is you go through a routine and it signals to you that it's bedtime. And for some people it's harder and some people it's easier. But at this moment in time, I'm finding that that is how my, um, my, I guess, emotional trauma and stress from the loss, that's how it's manifesting right now. Um, but I don't need to turn to addictions. I don't need to turn to drugs. I don't need to turn to alcohol. Um, I don't need to give in to the seemingly sleeplessness and stay up all hours of the night and just say, oh, this is just how it is. This is just how I am. No, no. We can do things to calm down our body and uh, put into place, I talked about one or two videos ago, um, emotional regulation. So a lot of people who are experiencing sleeplessness too, they've worked themselves into a place where they're not regulating their emotions. And so you have to go back and put things in place in order to regulate your emotions. And if you have the Holy Spirit in you, he gives us self-control and he gives us the mind of Christ. So there's no reason why we don't, we we have the power inside of us to, to control our body and say, Lord, I need you to help me to sleep and to rest and turn off my brain. And we don't need to give into um, 
things of the flesh or even ways that the enemy might come against us and try and rob us of our sleep and our peace, which are gifts that the Lord has given us. Um, so anyways, I was talking to my husband about that. So that's how it's manifesting itself right now. Um, not as many, not as many like, um, crying spells and that sort of thing, or as much depression, but kind of, um, fighting sleep. But like I said, you can find ways to help yourself in that, um, drinking tea, that herbal tea to help you calm down. Um, you know, you can get a back massager, put that on your back to relax your muscles. You can snuggle with your pet. Um, go outside and do stargazing. Oh, another thing that I learned, and I'm going to share this because maybe some of you guys are in this stage of the grieving process right now with difficulty sleeping, but a lot of people who experience insomnia or difficulty sleeping, even without experiencing the loss of a loved one, what happens is your clock inside of yourself is like kind of going haywire. Like the Lord gave us, what is it called? Uh, I forget what it's called, but your inner clock is like, it's haywire. And especially if you're doing caffeine and late nights and really all this stuff, it gets messed up. But what you can do to reset that is you can actually, you can go camping somewhere and do this or just go in your own yard or you can just open up all your blinds and don't block the sun out. But a good thing they said is to go out into nature. So set up a tent in your yard or something or go camping, but sleep out in nature because God made that natural rhythm and that will help reset your inner clock so you know with the darkness doing things outside not using your screen reading going to sleep um, with the dark and doing that for a couple of days and it will actually reset the inside of you so that you can get back on a rhythm and um, being out in nature also is super healing and then as the sun comes out you know it'll rise you up early and so that's the natural and and godly order of things so use that for your health and your healing and your wholeness, especially if you're dealing with that right now in the middle of loss, you can do that, you know, spending time in nature, um, nature in and of itself is healing, even if you don't need that inner reset. Um, so the next thing that I was going to talk about, um, oh, okay, let me tell you guys this, this is a really cool story. Um, so the Lord just he shows up in so many ways um, through this difficult time, and like I said, the uh, the um, like the the grief can come on. Like I just am going, and then all of a sudden, like um, so I was. It can just come like a big wave, you know. It can just and then all the emotions. It's not like a little at a time, you know. Well, um, I was leaving work the other day, and I was going to stop at the library. And I was driving home and I, I had a thought of something. I was thinking through something and I just had a huge wave of grief that came and hit me and my eyes welled up with tears and I started crying and I felt like, oh man, this is going to be a big crying spell. I'm not going to walk into the library like this. Like I've talked about, it's okay, cry where you're at, that's fine. So if I'm in the library and it hits me, I'm just going to cry. I don't need to run away or hide it or whatever. And I'm not ashamed at the same time. If my crying spell hits before I go into the library and I'm right in the middle of it, I'm not going to walk into the library sobbing and red face and you know what I'm saying, causing a big old scene. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go to the library a different day. So I keep driving and I get closer and I thought, I really wanted to go to the library. Lord, can you help me, you know, um, just take this sadness away, take this wave of sadness away. So I pull into the parking lot of the um, library and I'm like, okay, I feel, I feel together. I'm going to go in. So I get my stuff. I go in, I check out my books. Well, the side of the library, there's a little store and you can get books in there. Like, you know, for really good prices, you can buy them. So I was looking for some books, a couple for my family. I had a couple of friends that I was looking for. Um, and so I go in there and I look in the free box and then there's a half off box. And then I go to the one where it's, you know, labeled religion and I'm looking for things to feed our spirit and strengthen our faith. So I'm looking through and I picked up a couple off the shelf and uh, I picked, yeah, I picked a couple off the shelf. I guess I'm just going to show you. Uh, and I look at them, you know, you have, sometimes you uh, open and you can read on the inside and it'll tell you what the book is about. Some of them, you turn it over and you read the back. I did this with a couple of them. And as I was doing this, I read something, I don't know, but all of a sudden it, my thought of my dad again and the grief just hit me and I started feeling really sad. My eyes started welling up tears and I was like wow what is going on today that this just happened like three times um like what what is triggering this you know and I felt overwhelmed and I felt um 
I felt like a, a, yeah, a sense of overwhelm coming over me. And I was like, oh, Lord. And at that very moment, I kid you not, the book that I was looking at, um, I don't know if I opened it like this to read or if I had flipped it over, but I did something with the movement. And this little sheet of paper falls out of the book onto my lap. I was, I was kind of in a kneeling position. And I'm like, huh, what's this? <laughs> and this little sheet of paper, this is about one, two, four inches tall, maybe three inches wide. It falls out. This is a rose. I don't know if you can see it. It's this old vintage paper. I love vintage stuff. It's a beautiful rose. It says in memory, and then it has two initials right there. And I was like, that's interesting. And um, I turn it over, and um, here's the poem that's written on the back. I'll read it to you guys. <laughs> it says, do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there, I do not sleep. I am the gusts of wind that blow. I am the shadow that falls across the snow. <laughs> I am the smile of sunshine in the day. I am the inner voice that leads your way. When you awake in the morning's hush, I am your encouragement from dawn to dusk. I am the memories that calm your night. I am the spirit that continues the fight. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. <laughs> In that moment, and I was just like, wow. And believe it or not, it's funny that it's making me cry right now because when I found it in the library, it actually made my tears go away because I had been tearing up. Um, and when I read it, I was so overjoyed and comforted. And I just felt like jumping for joy and leaping and like laughing out loud. I was it just made me so happy, and the Lord was like right in that very moment. And and the book that I had picked up, it wasn't about death. It wasn't about grieving. I was looking at different titles for different uplifting things. So it was so neat that somebody tucked this away in there and donated the book. And at that very moment, the Lord had let it fall out into my lap. And had I not gone to the library... Um, I totally would have missed out on this blessing and it's such a cool reminder and there have been so many of those along the way I'm trying to just kind of put them here and there I might do a video and just share a handful of them because there have been so many and I wanted to encourage you guys but I also want you guys to be able to recognize those things because there's so many special things that the Lord sends to us through this journey of grieving and we miss out on them or we talk ourselves out of believing that they're from him that he's with us through the whole thing and so that was so special. So I just give glory to the Lord and um, I just encourage you guys to call on him every moment of your day. He loves us and he wants to help us. Um, I do want to point out that this is not um, this poem. It's And the Lord, I know that was the hand of the Lord that used this to encourage me. But this poem, if you look at the, if I look at the words, I can like pick this apart and be like, well, that's not biblical. That's not biblical, you know. My dad is not actually the gust of winds that blow. My dad is not actually, um, you know, uh, you know, the smile of sunshine. Like I can pick it apart and say, so, so don't, don't let that be a stopping point to you. And, and also I want to say, don't believe that. Um, there are some people that will be like, oh, every good thing that happens is, is my lost loved one is causing that. No, um, I don't believe that. Um, so I did just want to point out that this was very comforting and it's very loving and kind and sweet, even though everything in there is not a biblical thing. And I don't believe everything in there, but it's not, don't let it lead you down the wrong pathway of thinking that everything is you know, does that make sense? I don't know. I'm kind of stumbling over my words, but it was a comfort. And it does show that um, the Lord comforts us and he'll even use things like this. That, But he gives me the wisdom to say, this line is truth. This line is not truth. But the sentiment behind it, I can look behind that and see the sentiment and say, wow, you know, my dad is with me. Um, like, because of the reasons that I talked about in the beginning, you know, his memories, his love, I'm a part of him. Um, he will always be with me. So when I'm experiencing those things, his memory is always with, excuse me, with me. And also on a spiritual level, I'm going to talk more about some spiritual and some supernatural things in another video, but on a spiritual level, 
he's a spiritual being, I'm a spiritual being, even though he's passed on to eternity, we are still connected um, in the spirit. Does that make sense? So I don't see him, his physical body is no longer, um, but we are still connected because like this says, <laughs> Uh, don't stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. So his body passed, his body died, but my dad as um, a soul and a spirit, he exists, but he's in the heavenly realm and we are still connected the same way that, that we're still connected with God. Um, does that make sense? So I, I want to talk more about that, um, about, I'm still learning. I'm learning more as I'm walking through this journey and questioning the Lord and waiting for some more clarification. So I won't have all the answers, but um, it's just really neat to see. But anyway, so I just want to encourage you guys to um, continue on this journey, continue feeling all of your feelings. There's a saying, it says you cannot heal until you feel. You have to feel them. You have to process them. You have to work through them and you have to move forward. So I just encourage you in your process. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you and shine his face upon you. Uh, thank you for joining me and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.